Good beautiful afternoon. Today we are going to talk about Charlotte Mason's first principle of children being born persons. And what does that mean? Why that's a obvious logical statement for some and not so much for others. So you're a born person, an individual. And I would go, well duh, but have I always treated my children as one? Um, Ambleside has a little paraphrase on there that talks about her volume six book and her first principle and that children are born persons. They are not just blank slates waiting to be filled um, with our ideas, wants, and desires. Children are individuals. They are embedded with already their own, their own likes, dislikes, wants, desires, and of course those things can be influenced by home environment, books they read, all that, all that good stuff. But the point is, is that when our children have ideas, when they have wants, desires, likes, dislikes, we should not be treating them as lesser than just because they are children. And that happens a lot and I am guilty of it also. <sighs> It's very often common for your child to say, hey, I want to do this, or I like this, I like that, and us to say, no, not right now, I don't care if you like that, I don't want to do that, um, nor I don't like that, and we tend to put our own wants and desires onto our children. And in some situations, there is nothing wrong with that, but we shouldn't treat them as lesser than, like, I have a really great idea about how we could go about finishing this project or cleaning this home. No, you're a child, you don't know. That is not the the idea that we want to emphasize here when it comes to that. They are born persons, and they are not these blank slates that just are waiting to be filled and programmed. They are individuals, and for me... The way I parent, the way I educate, the way I talk to my children, discipline, all of those things have been influenced by the thought of that principle. That I should be treating my child with care, love, and affection. That they have a, a their own emotions, their own likes and dislikes. And like I said, for some of us, that's like an obvious like, duh, of course. Um, and I've always tended to be on the more gentle parenting side of parenting. But for me, that was still a rev revolutionary concept. Like, oh yeah, my kids are not just there for me to make them into what I want them to be. For us as Christians, we want our children to be what God has in store for them and what he wants them to be. So for us, it's first seeking his will for their life, um, which is not something that everyone does. But that's what we are to do. But we're also to remember that the children are built with their own individuality. And that was just a great blessing and encouragement to have that thought behind that principle for me. Um, so I wanted to touch on that just a little bit in hopes to be an encouragement to homeschool moms and families that are learning about the Charlotte Mason principles. And also she talks about how, of course, children's brains are developing. They do not have a full cognitive ability to always make good decisions, so on and so forth. So this is not referring to just like let your children do whatever. They have their own wants and desires and should just be able to do everything without any instruction from a parent. That's not what it's referring to, but more so that guiding your child while allowing them to be an individual person and checking the situation. Like, is the child be being treated as a whole person, not just a child? So their emotions, um, you know, their intellect, their, their wants, desires, feelings, are all those things being considered and not just the whole, you are a child, so you will do what you are told. Um, you're going to be just a product of your education. Because also that has always been a very big thing is that um, people will send their kids to certain schools, um, whether it's for music or classical education or whatever it may be in order to have the child be a product of their education. And so it's just to look at the child as a whole person and to try to keep that in mind throughout our journey. Now, of course, as homeschoolers, we we see those wants and ideas and desires from our kids come out so much, and it can be an incredible blessing. So be an encouragement to yourself. Read some, some up on that first principle and just think about throughout your day, is my child being treated as a whole person? Um, it's a good question to ask yourself. Um, and it's a good question to ask as you're treating other people, um, in your life. And I don't mean treating them like medically, but you know, talking to them, interacting with them. Are you treating them like a whole person? Are you treating them 
in a situational response. So that's my little tidbit of a vlog for today. If you aren't subscribed, consider subscribing as we go on sharing about homeschooling, life, budgeting, gardening, family goods, and we will see you guys on the next vlog.